All right, welcome everyone to the stream. Uh, where I will be talking about um, basic strategies for openings and uh, middle games for uh, beginners. And uh, I will try to explain what uh, the most important strategies are, what basically to look out for, and what are the what the, what to do, what people should do, what not to do, and I will show some examples of uh, of that and how to apply it. And uh, so, hold on a second, uh, I'm gonna start with, uh, with uh, trying to say, explain what is the most important thing, what are the most important things. So first, uh, in my opinion, there are three very important factors that people should think about when playing chess. The first one, and they're all equally important, and they kind of coexist together. So uh, the first one is um, s center, control of the center. Uh, center are uh, basically four, four central squares that uh, in, in the middle of the board. And uh, basically, who controls them, you know, has the, the kind of... Um, is in charge of the game in general. Has more space. Has more kind of like possibilities for to move their pi move uh, his pieces, and uh, in general, it gives more opportunities to win the game. Then you can attack king side, queen side, whatever you think is sensible. Uh, this is one thing. Second thing, uh, apart from center, is the development mm -hmm. of pieces, piece uh, activity, and uh, having uh, in mind. S uh, control of the center basically you can play with your pieces and uh, active piece play uh, gives you you know possibilities to win the game so uh, if you develop your pieces you can uh, create threats grab material things like that and the third thing which is the m sort of not w very important I won't say more important because all of them are in my opinion equally important but like especially important <laughs> if I could put it like this uh, is the king safety uh, if because if your king is safe you will not get mated but like if your king is in danger you may get mated no matter how well your pieces are placed and uh, if the control is center you just have to always watch out for your king that's why I will uh, try to show here in this uh, in this sort of like uh, class what fir at first what not to do uh, let's say uh, in the opening and slash middle game so let's say wife played e4 which is very sensible and logical move and uh, if normal response would be, of course, let's say, for instance, e5 or c5, which will lead to the normal openings. But let's say black doesn't kind of care about center and doesn't care about piece development and just plays some random moves with pawns, so a6, for instance. All right, so white goes d4, which is the you normally the thing, uh, you know, it's correct to, to develop, you know, uh, to, I mean, to control the center, uh, open the bishop on c1 and open mm -hmm. knight on c3 as well. Uh, and bishop from a1, you just can go knight c3, bishop f4, knight f3, you know, develop your pieces. So this is a white employee's correct strategy, but black, on the other hand, just ignores it, plays h6. So let's see what happens in, like, some example, you know, um, example uh, scenario that can happen in the game if black, let's say, ignores, you know, the rules of, you know, center development and king safety, because this is... Um, and this could very, in my opinion, is very instructive. So knight c3 is logical. e6, another pawn move. Knight f3. White does everything according to the, you know, to the to the rules. Knight developing pieces. B5. Bishop d3 again. And again, uh, Black should of course start developing pieces right now. Bishop b7. Knight e7. Knight f6 maybe. Knight f6 maybe not the greatest move, but still better than uh, just you know randomly pushing pawns. So, uh, but black plays before and trying to, to, let's say, attack this knight on c3, asking what it does. So, uh, first of all, it's not the, not not correct to play like this because you need to develop pieces. So let's say white goes knight a4, logical move, and black continues the strategy of pushing pawns forward, which is very bad pawn play, obviously, ignoring all the development. While white has the, the, um, the control in the center and already three pieces in the game. So let's see what happens. White castles. Uh, king is already uh, safe in the, in the in the on the king side. 
g4 from under bad move of course uh, this is an example of bad play for black what black should not be doing and then i will show what black should do normally and like typical opening slash middle games that you know can arise in the game of, of in games of grandmasters and like you know anyone who can achieve them if only they start developing pieces normally so this is what you are not supposed to do g4 knight e5 active move attacking the opponent g4 so okay if black white attacks normally black should defend so h5 and suddenly f3 and this already opens the f5 potential f file potentially and uh, with this knight on e5 uh, sort of hitting this pawn on f7 we read and this rook opening here queen coming in here it starts getting really really bad for black very very dangerous position so let's say black plays d6, try to harass the knight. And already white has possibilities of sacrificing here the knight and uh, basically attacking the king, opening the king. So let's say knight takes f7, why not? King takes f7, pawn takes, already opens the f file and attacking the king. And king has to come back. And for instance, black and white has many moves. Queen f3 is possible, there are many, many moves possible, but I really like here e5, for instance, because this move e5 uh, creates a big threat of bishop g6 and uh, queen f3 as well. And uh, this, uh, if you like, if you notice, black hasn't made any move with the piece, while white already uh, made like several moves with the pieces and uh, created um, some already mating attack. Uh, uh, protected its own king to g1 uh, to the king side and uh, has wonderful peace play because queen f3 is coming and uh, bishop g6 is coming so what may happen for instance if black suddenly starts finally developing pieces knight d7 for instance of course it's a terrible move i mean possibly position is just lost i mean it is lost so bishop g6 king e7 of course rook f7 wins but just to show what that white can simply improve another piece to the to the game bishop g5 is not the best move the best move is obviously rook f7 it's just made in few moves but also bishop g5 is possible which certainly wins here so that's the um, so that's the big problem here for black that already position is lost simply because black uh, didn't develop any pieces and this is what black i mean if white was doing following the same strategy of winning pawns black would do the same thing so this is what neither player should be playing with only pawns that's why pieces are uh, are supporting pawns no they're not they don't stop that they don't start falling uh, for some reason so um yeah this is what you're not supposed to do in while playing chess all right, so let's uh, see uh, what you should do. Uh, what kind of typical openings, typical possibilities you may have in the game. Uh, so I will uh, show what happens uh, right now. Uh, if white plays, uh, if uh, like what happens after typical openings after d4. So d4 is like, you know, one of the possible moves to start a game d4 uh, and uh, let's say uh, how um, having in mind those three concepts uh, cast um, kings uh, okay center control of the center uh, peace play development of peace slash development of pieces and king safety how all those strategies uh, apply in let's say a regular modern theory of openings and middle games so uh, let's say d4 knight f6 uh, this is and let's say this will be catalan opening and you guys can see how um, how white and black develops its pieces. Knight f3, uh, d5, okay, both sides control the center equally. Uh, g3, white wants to develop uh, bishop to g2, bishop e7, bishop g2, short castle, short castle, he takes c4, queen c2, a6, queen takes c4, grabbing the pawn back, b5, queen c2, bishop b7. And here we have the position that basically uh, both sides are perfectly developed relatively white still has to move the bishop from d2 somewhere knight from b1 as well uh, black has to develop uh, from knight from d7 but for instance there is a line like bishop g5 for instance there is knight d7 say bishop takes f6 knight takes f6 uh, knight d2 rook c8 knight b3 the, sorry rook c8 knight b3 and this is a sort of norm, norm, normal position uh, where um, both sides are very well developed, both kings are safe, both uh, sides, uh, both white, white and black control the center, and the uh, position is pretty much balanced. And here, from here, basically, the entire strategical uh, fight begins. It doesn't uh, happen, you know, you, you can hear, think about, uh, can think about some of like c5, bishop e4, you know, there are many, many moves here, it's a theoretical position. 
So yeah, this is how it works, and this is how you apply for, let's say, those ideas in Catalan. Here uh, we will go uh, back a little bit, and uh, we'll uh, see if white not doesn't go Catalan, but let's say uh, Queen's Gambit declined, uh, Knight C3, and Bishop E7. It's classical line, Bishop G5, uh, Bishop H4, Bishop mm -hmm. Castle E3, B6 is Polislavski, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, bishop d3, bishop b7, short castle, knight bd7. Again, both sides castled, kings are safe. Both, uh, maybe white has slightly, slightly more control of the center because of this pawn on c4, but in general it's pretty much balanced. And uh, both sides develop all the pieces. Uh, first knight, then bishops, castle, everything is perfect. Let's say queen e2, c5, right now black equally controls the center. Maybe why it's slightly better here simply because there is like there's one extra move for white because white started, def started first, but it's not a big deal sort of you know it's like you know typical strategy opening position from the opening that can happen uh, in games of grandmaster and to be honest I think there are like 1,000 games in this position in the database so uh, this is what you know you should do sort of like one of the examples of what you of what you should do as white or black basically develop all the pieces control the center castle make your king is safe things like that and let's say from the other uh, side let's say if uh, black plays g6 then we develop to bishop to g7 let's say it's a grunfeld opening it's a uh, is grunfeld so here knight c3 g5 uh, bishop g7 uh, allows king's indian defense which is also possible obviously but it as as i said it gives white control of the center so it's at least on grandmaster level is not considered as the best opening however it's very very both very playable as well uh, but in general in terms of like ter from theoretical perspective let's say the grunfall is like say a little bit better opening than king's indian however king's indian is also perfectly playable uh, c, c takes d5 uh, knight takes d5 e4 knight c3 bc and yes here white controls the center but the thing is that black has some active play to attack the center. So c5, b knight e2, knight c6, of course developing pieces. Bishop e3, castle, castle, making sure the king is safe. And right now black has variety of options of attacking the center and trying to uh, maintain equality. Let's say bishop g4 is one possibility, trying to pin uh, the knight and queen. For provoking with some weakness f3, let's say bishop d7. It's some weakness and basically uh, C D C D C X D four C X D four will happen at some point. There's possibility of Queen C seven Rook A D eight for Black. It uh, and putting some pressure on the D file. So it's not even though White has let's say advantage of the center here, uh, controlling the center. It's not really kind of significant because Black also puts lots of pressure in the center and. Uh, with active pieces like let's say bishop on g7 and bishop knight on c6 uh, developing queen to c7 rook on d8 uh, there is enough compensation for the deficit of the center here so, uh, so this is another opening and, uh, and finally let's say this is slav opening uh, sort of meran um, so i'll go from beginning d4 uh, d5 uh, c4 c6 knight f3 knight c6 knight f6 again developing pieces controlling equally the center uh, maybe maybe white has a little bit more control of the center because this pawn on c4 is there, and but it's normal uh, in the um, because white started the game, so it's normal. e6, e3, knight bd7, queen c2, bishop d6, all developing pieces, all the normal developing moves. b3, short castle, bishop e2, b6, bishop b2, bishop b7, short castle, queen e7, rook d1, rook d8, rook e1, rook e8, and as you guys can see, the position is perfectly fine for both white and black. And from here, the entire strategy, the strategical fight goes on. But here, it basically begins. It's the main vertical position in this uh, Meran Slav Meran uh, opening. And here, White can play uh, through e4. White can play through Bishop f1, g3. We start with g3. There are lots of strategical plans that are mar far more advanced, and they are beyond of the scope of this uh, of this uh, sort of tutorial of the openings that I'm showing right now. But uh, basically, from this position, it all starts, let's say, rather than uh, playing random moves at the beginning of the game uh, with pawns. So uh, these are typical openings after d4. Let's, let's look at, at what happens uh, with typical openings after e4, uh, because it's also um, interesting to, to, to see what happens uh, if white starts with e4. Uh, let me just open the chessboard, uh, e4. 
So um, e4. And there basically are four typical openings, four main openings that white, black, and employ. However, others are also playable. Uh, but let's say e4, e5 is uh, possible. e4, c5 is Sicilian. e4, e6 is uh, sorry. e4, e6 is French. e4, c6 is uh, Caracan. So all of them are perfectly playable, and all of them I will show example of the lines where both sides are trying to you know uh, apply those concepts of. Uh, center of the, the pieces, uh, develop, develop, developing the pieces, and finally uh, king safety. So uh, let's say e4. Let's start with French, for instance. E4, e6, d4, d5. If French is, by the way, a favorite opening of Varakobian. Uh, the c5. I think Var also employs the c5 here. So e d e d. Neither free knight c6. Uh, other moves queen takes d5, but let's, for the sake of simplicity, let's play with the pawn with one of, one of the examples. And the free knight c6, bishop b5, uh, bishop d6, again developing pieces, castle, knight d7. Well, black is a little bit behind right now in development because black hasn't cast uh, of the pieces because it hasn't castled yet, but it, as we will see, it will happen very shortly. So d takes c4, uh, d takes c5, bishop takes c5, knight b3, bishop d6, for instance, rook e1, short castle. And right now everything is balanced again. Let's say bishop g5, bishop g4. And uh, in this position, uh, again, it all just begins. You know, both sides developed pieces. Uh, both created some threats already. And uh, from here, the entire strategical battle may, uh, I mean, like just mm -hmm. begin, begins. And uh, so this is one of the examples how to apply those concepts. Uh, here, uh, both sides sort of, sort of control the center. Uh, white has maybe black has maybe isolated pawn on d5, but on the other hand, it gives some more space for their pieces. So it's a pretty much balanced position, and this is what one of the example of what you should do opening in the opening with white and black, no matter the color you are playing with. So let's say again Karokan. Let's say uh, Karokan uh, d5. There are also there's e5. There it takes d5 move, uh, but I want to focus on knight c3 just for uh, for example. Knight takes e4, bishop f5, classical line. Knight g3, bishop g6, h4, h6. Knight f3, knight d7, h5, bishop h7, bishop d3. Trading those bishops. Queen takes d3. And right now black has uh, I'm a little bit like problems. Uh, I mean not really. Uh, black is a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, behind white in, uh, in terms of, you know, um, pieces here that are playing in the game. But on the other hand, uh, the position is very solid, so black can uh, basically try to uh, catch up, and this is what black does. Let's say e6, bishop d2, knight f6, long castle, bishop b7, king b1, short castle. And very quickly, black already caught up. And uh, here, from here, basically, the entire strategical battle again begins. No, from here, not from move number one, where basically you just have to first develop your pieces and then rather than push pawns. And then, right now, for instance, white has ideas, let's say knight e4, with idea of playing g, uh, g4 then and g5, trying to uh, then push pawns in order to create, let's say, open the g5 for the rooks. Let's say if queen, let's say c7 or something, then it's with the work worth uh, consideration g4, knight takes g4, and the rook h or g1 or rook dg1 let's say rook hg1 and basically the idea is that right now only move is f5 because if knight takes f6 if knight becomes back to f6 bishop h6 and already here is there is some you know uh, attack for white but uh, on the other hand uh, black can let's say attack in the center with c5 so here let's say pawn moves and uh, are let's say more kind of like in place rather than earlier simply because uh, they are supported by the pieces that are already developed in the game. So that's the idea. Uh, so this is Karokan. And let's uh, finally show uh, E4, um, let's say, Sicilian. Uh, and Sicilian, this will be another classical opening. Knight f3, d6, d4. Uh, we'll go for knight but we'll get back, uh, get to Scheveningen. Knight c3, a6, bishop e2, e6, for instance. Uh, short castle, bishop e7. F4, short castle, perfect development from both sides. Bishop e3, knight c6, uh, king h1, queen c7, a4, rook e8, perfect development from both sides. And right now, uh, for instance, black can go, white can go bishop f3, white can go queen e1, trying to basically uh, try to attack on the king side, while uh, whereas black will try to uh, create some central play with e5, for instance. So, uh, but again, it only all happens after all pieces are in the game, not before. So this is another type of opening that you guys can play. 
and finally uh, e4 e5 we, and here I will show Briar opening a Briar version in the Spanish defense uh, Spanish game more like knight bishop b5 a6 uh, bishop a4 knight f6 short castle bishop b7 rook e1 b5 bishop b3 short, uh, d6 uh, c3 short castle h3 and right now there are, there is there are lots of possibilities for for black there is knight a5 there is bishop b7 the different uh, different lines but i want just to show knight b8 because uh, it's very very nice how black can uh, regroup here uh, d4 uh, knight bd7 knight bd2 bishop b7 again developing all the pieces yeah bishop uh, coming back here a little bit knight b8 may sound look a little bit weird because it just knight came to c6, to c6 from b8 but the idea is that knight comes to d7 to support the center and doesn't stay in the way of bishop on b7 so this is what happens bishop b7 normally with knight on c6 this knight will be, wouldn't be so greatly placed i think simply because uh, this knight bishop on e7 will be covered but right now it's uh, hitting on e4 causing some problems for white and white deals with bishop c2 rook e8 knight f1 bishop f8 knight g3 and g6 bishop comes to g7 and uh, this is sort of you know again theoretical position and here like white has lots of possibilities same as black has lots of possibilities and this from here the entire you know battle again begins so this under opening that you guys may consider in order to uh, get some you know playable position uh, with uh, lots of strategical fight and uh, so yeah this would be one of the time i mean that will be for openings after e4 what you guys can do but uh, i wanted to in the end to, to show some games from practical like uh, from practical side of chess how uh, it ended in one of my games uh, what um, how i applied those concepts of let's say center uh, pieces development and king safety in my game um, a long time ago uh, but uh, this will basically show what you're supposed to do and what my opponent was doing in this game, uh, what you're not supposed to do. And I won this game in 20 moves, so it was a pretty short game, and I applied basically those concepts perfectly, in my opinion. So let's let's see how, how it was. Uh, let me just open the game. Uh, it, uh, it was the game uh, from 2012, and I played against uh, Sylvester Bednarek, it was Polish uh, Chess Extraliga. Uh, so I started with white, d4, I started the game with d4, knight f6, uh, knight f3, uh, c5, mm -hmm. which is not considered usually as a little bit inaccurate, but it's possible. d5, I basically immediately try to grab the, con uh, take the control over the center. b5, uh, because otherwise I may have considered playing c4, or knight c3 and stopping b5, b5, so b5 is therefore logical. Bishop g5, but on, because this drawback is again pawn move where, where I can develop my pieces and the black don't necessarily want to develop this bishop to b7, I think. So it has some drawbacks. That's why it's a little bit like inaccurate, like, you know, a little bit dubious for black to play like this. That's why the old openings I mentioned earlier after d4 are, in my opinion, much better than this. But, but it's okay either way but okay queen a5 so it's some sort of random check c3 uh, in my opinion better was just to play queen b6 if anything just to try to take with the if bishop f6 then bishop take queen takes queen, queen can take on f6 uh, because queen a5 c3 knight e4 okay uh, this under sort of rule uh, in order to develop pieces, you have to play with all of them rather than uh, just make several uh, moves with one piece in the opening. So, okay, I basically attack my bishop, so I have to come back. I make also second move my bishop, but uh, it doesn't really uh, matter as much because I can kick this knight from e4 very easily, while bishop on h4 does uh, you know good job uh, in terms of uh, putting some pressure on maybe e7. So, like, let's say if uh, let's say if happen, let's say if white uh, black would like to play g6 bishop g7 then black still can't castle because the pawn on e7 will be hanging because of this bishop so it's not so easy for black to develop here so black played d6 my opponent played d6 knight bd2 as i said i'm basically trading those knights bishop f5 is sort of logical but like as you guys can see this bishop is still not even close to be in the game so, and this is a big problem because when this bishop is not in the game, black can castle here. And this was the entire problem in this game for my opponent. So I played just e3, 
uh, my open and played knight d7. And I start uh, expanding on the king's uh, queen side simply uh, by playing a4. And the idea is that I want to uh, take advantage of this queen on a5 that's already in the game, but it's not placed well and sort of object of my attack with uh, the rook from a1. So my open finally took on d2, I took the knight. The idea by taking the knight is that I want to, in case of b4 or something, I want to have maybe c4 square for my knight. So uh, also I have possibility to move like e4 that I can start with. So it like gives you know me lots of lots of possibilities. So but my opponent take took on a4. He didn't like playing before. But this has also its drawback because I play e4 first, bishop g6, and now rook takes e4, hitting the queen again. So another so it will be like a second time that black has to move the queen. And uh, which is definitely not good because um, king is still in the center. And uh, if let's say this bishop was easily developed and the king was castled, uh, this bishop developed and king castled, then it would be all right. But um, in this position, because this king is on e8, black faces immediately huge problems, and uh, in terms of you know what uh, what uh, what to do next, basically, it's hard to come up with the next move because if queen b6, for instance, and knight c4 comes with tempi, for instance, it's not so easy to react to this. Also, rook a6 is maybe possible, but then queen takes b2, so black has to be also a little bit careful. So knight c4 makes perfect sense. So uh, my opponent played queen c7. Oh, by the way, uh, looking at this position from this, those three factors that I've mentioned, center and pieces development, piece, piece play and uh, king safety, we can easily see that white controls the center because of those two pawns. Uh, I'll maybe take this away. Um, white controls the center, has full control of the center. Pieces, uh, one, two, three, sort of four, even though queen hasn't moved yet. Uh, queen sort of in the game because supports the rook on a4 and uh, yeah it basically supports the rook so basically four pieces are in the in the game while black has uh, and they are well placed because uh, rook attacks the queen bishop uh, prevents sort of like uh, development on the uh, of, you know, of the king side for of black uh, and uh, knight from the two may come to c4 at some point so all pieces are well placed while black has to run with the queen away knight on e7 doesn't do anything probably the best piece but in bishop on g6 is terrible because when it stays in the way of development of development of this bishop uh, with uh, g6 bishop g7 right now it's not possible because simply this bishop is blocking it so um, Piece black has much better, you know, pieces here, and also king. Finally, the king, the king, black's king is in the center, in the center, and there has no easy way of getting to the king side and to be safe. While white's king basically just, I just need to move the bishop and castle king side, and that's it basically. And I'm fully developed here, and uh, I'm enjoying my position basically. So in my high game happened queen c7, and this is what I'm doing: bishop b5, uh, pinning here and uh, developing my my bishop. And I want to just castle, and uh, this position looks just overwhelming, basically. My opponent played a5, which is the move I don't really understand, but pos probably position was already really, really bad. Played castle, I played castle, and uh, continue developing my pieces. Is e5 right now, and uh, this I think was a very, very important moment because if I if I haven't uh, okay, I, I had to ask myself what my opponent wants, and basically he wants to play bishop e7, and finally, even if I take let's say for instance if I play just random move like rook e1, it's not a good move. Well, for instance, if bishop e7, if I play let's say bishop g3, he can castle already, and suddenly he finished his development. So I don't want that. And bishop takes e7, king takes e7, he managed to trade pieces, and his king actually in the center is also okay. So, and uh, having that in mind, that position is uh, closed because he sort of started controlling also the center. He started fighting for the center with this move e5. Uh, it's not so easy anymore for me in this position. That's okay. Still, I'm much better because uh, I have this c4 square for my knight, and basically this is a weakness right now, but like. Considering what options I have here in this position, uh, after e5, I don't really want to uh, allow him just such easy development of bishop e7, king e7, and, and or, or castle. That's why in here I uh, play d takes e6, which is uh, en passant, uh, and uh, white uh, here cre opens the center. Uh, because black's king is in the center, hasn't castled yet, and... Uh, launching an attack basically 
So f takes e6, knight c4. And uh, right now the idea could be, I may just attack this pawn somehow. I can play maybe e5 at some point. I can play, let's say, f4, f5 also. I have so many ideas. I can also play queen g4. Uh, there, are, I mean, there are lots of, also bishop g3. There are lots of ideas here for why the like, white can uh, do it. It's basically a matter of choice. So my opponent, uh, and the thing is that black is still has problems with development of pieces. So basically, probably the best move was still bishop e7, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if somehow it fails tactically. Uh, but it, anyway, having his king in the center, I can even just take, take and play maybe f4 or something. Also, it's possible to play queen g4. So like there are many moves that basically white uh, can play and uh, have really, really, you know, attacking, really good attacking position. So my opponent, my opponent played rook b8. I played rook takes a5, just grabbing the free pawn. So he took on e4, uh, taking his pawn. But the problem with this move, why was Eric play bishop this move bishop e7? Because in here, yes, he gets this e4 pawn. That's true. But if you guys notice, still those pieces are not in the game, and he hasn't uh, moved them yet. And suddenly, after very simple move that I played here, rook e1. Finally, the last piece comes into the game because uh, if this is position is very, very destructive. Um, all my pieces are in the game. Even though my queen hasn't moved yet on d1, it's still also in the game because put some pressure on d6. So basically, my knight, uh, both bishops, and both rooks are in the game. Queen as well. King is safe. While black has uh, played only uh, with uh, bishops several times, uh, several times with the queen, some random move the rook. And king is the knight is pinned uh, on this uh, in here, and uh, those pieces are still not developed. They are still in the in the middle of the board. The king is in the middle of the board, and bishop on f8, bishop on e8 hasn't made any moves yet. And suddenly, black faces huge problems because this well, bishop on e4 is under attack, and because of this e5 pressure here, black white is like basically just winning here. So my opponent tried to defend the knight, uh, the bishop, I mean, with d5. But this, on the other hand, opens this diagonal. And I made, made uh, use of it by playing bishop g3. And suddenly, black collapses on this diagonal and loses material. Uh, so my opponent here plays play queen takes a5, probably hoping on knight takes a5. If I took, then uh, rook takes b5. And hoping for some conversation, however, position is still obviously lost, let's say queen a4. But I don't even need to do this because I can first take bishop takes d7 uh, with the idea, uh, yeah, bishop uh, takes d, uh, sorry, uh, bishop takes d7. And uh, if uh, king d7, I can take then, then the queen for free, basically. And uh, after bishop takes d7, my opponent uh, resigned. So if you guys notice, black hasn't moved bishop on f8, rook on h8, king is on e8 under attack, black loses queen, and this is basically game game over. So, uh, yeah, this with this game, uh, I just wanted to basically show all the concepts that we learned today, uh, how important it is to basically play with all the pieces, what kind of openings there exist, and what uh, you should do in the opening rather than just randomly moving pawns, even though uh, they make attack something. It's better to still develop pieces, having in mind longer sort of perspective to develop all the pieces and uh, attempt to, uh, you know, get some playable position uh, rather than uh, just create one move threads that basically white or black depends on who we're playing with or and against. Um, can easily deal with, and then uh, white, uh, then and then uh, the opponent can basically take advantage of your weaknesses. As we said in the pawn play, basically white was creating, black was creating lots of weaknesses that uh, white further uh, was successively e exploited, and uh, finally the knight, uh, the the king was getting made it. So same thing here, uh, black was making some random pawn moves, uh, some random piece moves with the same pieces, not the trying to develop this bishop on a failure rook on h8. And here uh, the game simply ended very quickly in 20 moves sim because of all the flaws that all the strategy my opponent employed had. So uh, I hope you find it interesting and, uh, um, and instructive as well.
So uh, I think that would be a sort of uh, all of what I have for today. And uh, thank you guys, and uh, until next time, bye. You just go to the end, click the end stream button on